Okay, meanwhile, uh, let me introduce guys. Uh, so, uh, my name is Alok Chitradi. I am a derivative head here. Uh, today, uh, we are going to do a session with Shubhadeep, uh, Shubhadeep Nandi. So, most of the trader community probably know. Uh, for the new guys, he is a well-known uh, option trader and uh, uh, he is uh, running his own firm, Quant Gym. Okay. And he is uh, doing uh, multiple sessions over uh, news channel, TV channels. He is also a great... Uh, uh, teacher as well so you you know he's also running his training program for this option trading right okay and i have with uh, peter peter kutino and then shankha mukherjee uh, so unfortunately manas is not uh, here manas is not well so he's not going to join so that's it uh, today we are uh, mostly focused on decoding on option chain and op uh, open interest so uh, just to give you the context so uh, in the earlier session also almost you know more than 5 10 session we did that every time we talk about the option chain and the open interest data points the the idea is to just give you the uh, rationale behind for any data set which you can use your daily routine trading right so any trader who is doing a regular option trading whether it is weekly or monthly at certain level you need to understand the data rather than only price action right and the more you enter into the data, the more you understand those data points, it will be beneficial for you while trading it. And that is also one of the reasons that we have created the FNA dashboard, where we have provided all the data set, which will eventually, whenever you start using, you'll realize that these data is nothing but one of the great friend while you are trading. Okay. So that's the overall agenda. Uh, obviously, there are multiple, uh, we have already lined up the overall discussion. Uh, but please, you know, open to ask anything and everything. In case we are not able to manage the time for your Q&A during our session, we'll try to answer post session and you can obviously, you know, just uh, write over Twitter. We'll try to address those questions and uh, just whatever question you are going to ask, we'll try to answer each and every question, whether you ask through any medium. Okay. So please do that. Okay. Uh, Shankha is joined. Okay. Dada, you are not a speaker yet. <laughs> Yeah, he joined, but he is a listener now. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, we can start. Hello, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Nandi sir. Like uh, uh, Nandi sir, how uh, like how did you start your journey as a trader? Uh, as a trader, basically, when I was eighteen, I started on the markets as an investor. So I used to buy shares, uh, hold them for six months, and sell and stuff. So mm -hmm. that was during the height of the Harshad Mehta bull run. So obviously every good thing comes to an end. That also came to an end. I went back to my studies, studied, uh, did my management, did my computers, went in with a job. Like everyone, whatever everyone does. Now in the year 2000, I was working in life insurance corporation as a development officer. Okay. So they used to pay me a princely salary of 9,500 per month. This was 99. Hmm. And uh, I also had this trading was always a hobby. So that was going on on the side. Now during the 99 bull run, 2000 bull market. Uh, at mm -hmm. one point, what I saw was I was making something like 35, 40,000 per month from the markets, mm -hmm. uh, giving maybe one hour to the markets. And my salary was 9.5, uh, where <laughs> I was giving probably 10 to 12 hours per day. Right. So at one point, I went in for an unpaid leave mm -hmm. and started my life as a trader. I thought that I can become a trader. I started off as a trader. Mm -hmm. Now, when I started off as a trader, prior to that, I was a fundamental guy totally. So I was. Uh, reading balance sheets, taking deliveries and stuff. But I also understood the importance of technical analysis because we had two magazines at that point of time. One was the Dalal Street uh, Journal and another was something called a Capital Market. Now, capital Market has technical charts of all stocks. They started it. And I always found it very interesting. But 99 Kolkata, it was very difficult to find people who could teach you technical analysis in a proper way. I was lucky to, I used to find uh, an organization in that. In fact, my trader at that point of time, my mentor is in this space, Gautam that, Gautam wasn't that. So it was a two-month course, two, three days, classes a week. There were five students in the class. And to get those five, they had to wait for two months because nobody was interested in technicals compared to today when everybody is into technicals. So there I learned technicals and started my journey as a trader. So I was a trader from, I started in 2000, everything was going well. So that's how I started actually, as a trader. Makes sense. Okay. Thank, thanks a lot, sir. So, uh, uh, you, this is just for, you know, uh, so that, you know, my, uh, our audience can understand the 
kind of scope we are going to discuss and kind of person we are going to discuss okay okay now uh, come to the straight to the our uh, you know relevant topic correct correct so correct. Uh, so uh, uh, let's let's start with the importance of option chain right uh, there okay. are several data available there are several videos available right but we just want to understand from your end as a data and as a technical analyst what you are trading right now what according to you what is the importance of option chain overall for a trader actually uh, the questions we discussed this was the question which i gave the most thought mm-hmm. and this will be interesting when i say why the option chain is interesting now understand a very few simple data points how india is different from the world in terms of an option chain number one the indian nsc market is pretty unique because we have one market where 100% of the options volume is concentrated on these stocks and indices correct in rest of the countries in the world you have multiple exchanges with multiple ois created in different exchanges so other countries actually cannot see this options as a whole we are unique in the sense we can see all the data point 1 point 2 as of now the options activity is much more than futures activity due to a lot of reasons number 1 is obviously the regulatory costs of trading futures is pretty high whereas the cost structure in options is pretty low so any person when he buys a nifty future and sells it 10 points later or he buys an atm option and sells it 5 points later he will understand the cost differential when he calculates it in fact i did a youtube free youtube video that the cost differential is pretty huge anyways so since option trading is so much concentrated so much widespread normally we know that a dog wags his tail correct the body of the dog he moves the tail moves so if i consider the futures market to be the dog and the option markets to be the tail which is because options is again a derivative of what is getting traded as an underlying here in the options market the tail actually is wagging the dog because the tail has much more weightage than the dog now the way we are placed in the market okay now once i said india was unique in terms of oi i will give a piece of information to you if you do not know it it will blow your mind for example you are trading with the s&p futures and the s&p options and options in the us market you do not get live oi oi comes at the end of the day as a single file that to very late in some markets even the next day so the us market or the european markets they do not have live oi which they can track this will actually answer a question which a lot of people ask that which book can i refer to to study the option chain guys there is no book because the literature we study is basically coming from us or europe mainly from the us right Yes. so the us market since they do not have live oi or the live chain analysis is not as sharp as we are doing in india so in india whoever you are talking to if he is doing an analysis of the option chain the majority of methods we use are basically self taught and observation we observe then we write down that this thing is happening when the option chain is changing like this and then what we start to do is make those into theories and make those into tradable strategies number 1 number 2 whenever you are seeing the option chain you need to understand how the traders are positioned as per their expectations and which side is taking a more informed decision now obviously in the options market there are buyers and there are sellers so we consider whenever you see the chain consider the chain from a seller's perspective not from a buyer's perspective there are simple reason let us say uh, nifty is a 17100 and a 17100 call is say 200 rupees correct nifty has a lot of 50 so if you want to buy one single option you will have to pay 200 into 50 which is 10000 rupees any person can pay 10000 by a call now when he buys a call go back to the basic uh, uh, theory of an options that as an options buyer you have the right but not the obligation so if the market falls tomorrow by 1000 points you lose that 10000 rupees only you don't lose more than that so your risk is limited your initial investment is also pretty low now think in terms of a point of a seller if a seller is selling that call to you he has to put up a futures margin to sell that call number 1 so his money investment his uh, capital invested in selling is much 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 higher than the buyer number 1 number 2 his risk is practically unlimited let's say he sells you a call and tomorrow nifty nirmala satanaman does something in the budget and nifty shoots up by 1000 points ho sakta hai because Correct. we remember 2009 when the congress government came to power we had two consecutive buying freezes so nifty can go up by 20% in two days it can happen a black swan can come then the seller is actually cleaned out he pays that 2000 points to you he has the obligation of paying that money to you what i'm trying to imply is a seller's decision is much more informed since the risk he is taking is immense compared to a buyer so whenever we see the chain 
we have to see the same from a seller's perspective perspective and try to understand what the data is telling about what action he is taking what thought process he is using and how he is seeing where the market will go or where the market will not go this is the importance of the option chain this tells you how traders are placed and what they are expecting on the market on the very near term on a monthly basis or on a extreme short term basis hmm. <coughs> ah got it <coughs> so no thank you yeah so i'm i'm so sorry i was not able to connect somehow no, so that was amazing explanation and shubhadeep <coughs> was i was shubhadeep really not aware that you know uh, option market in us is not live yes and you cannot get the why live and no, here we keep on complaining is not like and here we keep on complaining with our brokers and with the exchanges that you are giving us late data we want instant second by second data see <laughs> i also got stunned because i have got a student a one time student who is now a friend who is a hedge fund manager based out of canada correct now he is trading on the nasdaq and s&p and everything now i taught him a lot of things now he told boss i cannot do this because i am not getting live why is it how the hell can you not get live why <laughs> send me that file actually it comes a day late the whole snp index you will get the volume live so they have algos which pick up when a whale is taking a position or getting out of a position but you cannot see the oi in the live markets how they are changing check it you will also be stunned i know that lot of people don't know this data so in india what he says is the data which you are getting even the bhav copy we get is very unique us market doesn't have this kind of a bhav copy and when you try to get this data it's a very expensive piece of data which you have to buy yeah nsc uh, is uploading this for free you are getting it down world is not so easy in us you have to pay a very high fee you need a license and then you can get this data or you buy it from a data vendor again you pay through your nose let's continue what that's amazing so what is the put call ratio and mm-hmm. how is it calculated so we and specifically okay. at different strikes yeah put call ratio if you go to the initial idea it's simply uh, it's uh, calculated in two methods one is on the volume one is on the open interest the classical uh, theory is obviously on the volume so number of puts traded divided by number of calls traded so if you put that uh, now that the volume of puts traded uh, volumes of calls traded that is basically known as the pcr on volume now in india we also have started doing it on oi which is the oi pcr that is uh, the oi standing on a put divided by the oi standing on a call so whether you do it by volumes or you do it by open interest is the same thing now the logic is it actually tells you that uh, the traders who are trading in the market which side they are biased on now there be contradiction out here because whatever be the bias put call ratio is basically a contra indicator i will give you an example let us say at any given point of time there are 100 puts traded and there are 50 calls traded so 100 divided by 50 is 2 so there are more puts traded in respect to calls apparently this tells you that the market is bearish because more puts are being traded people have more bearish expectation but this is a contra indicator which means when Absolutely. people are trading puts that means retail gaon bearish hai to market yes it goes back so if you understand this so see the put call ratio it tells you what the bearish bullish market is but it's basically a contra indicator so if the ratio is basically more than one which means more puts have been traded uh, during the day and if it is less than one means more calls have been traded so bias is people are generally bullish so put call ratio generally the call side is always much more put side is less but whenever you see the put side going to a extreme level you can probably go that at absolute market bottoms when everybody was saying maybe market will go to zero that's when more puts got get traded and uh, that's how we basically the market uh, turns and there are some very simple rules these are followed worldwide not only in india in order to analyze the put call ratios now pcr actually is interpreted uh, again using option sellers into consideration and uh, taking that the institutions or the bigger players are on the sell side and the retail is on the buying side now there are two three rules one is if the put call ratio is increases when minor dips are getting into the market right market makes a dip the pcr increases and the major trend of the market is up let us say market is basically kind of in a bull market we get this short correction and in the correction the put call ratio increases which means it's bullish because it means put writers again from the sellers perspective the put writers 
are aggressively writing the puts when a dip comes because they are getting higher price so in a uptrending market if you if the pcr increases on a dip that's actually a bullish indication okay second is the put call ratio decreases when the market is testing a resistance level now let us say we are at 17100 we know 18000 is a resistance market goes up and hits uh, 18000 the put call ratio comes down put call ratio comes down mean obviously the call side is increasing now this is a bearish indication this means the call writers are building fresh positions they are expecting either a limited upside ki yahan pe market khatam hoga ya there will be a correction the third interpretation is the put call ratio is decreasing during a trending market this means it's bearish option market writers and are then aggressively selling the calls so if a down trending market you see the put call ratio is decreasing that means more calls are being written right so that's bearish so these three conditions are major conditions you can obviously find out minor nuances minor uh, i would say corollaries to this thing but keep these three points in mind that should be uh, give you a major idea what's going on right can you repeat the can you repeat all three point point once again for our users okay basically put call ratio is increasing uh, when a minor dip is coming in an uptrending market that's basically bullish it basically means put writers are aggressively writing puts when the dip is coming in Correct. number 2 uh, if a put call ratio is decreasing when the market is testing a resistance level it means bearish it means that a resistance more calls are being written that is actually decreasing the put call ratio right because it's put by call mm. and number 3 is if the put call ratio is decreasing in a down trending market so market is falling and the put call ratio is decreasing means put activity is lower when the market is falling but call activity is higher which means more calls are getting written again when you see the put call ratio you have to see it from a seller's perspective not from a buyer's perspective so if a market is down trending and put call ratio is decreasing that's actually means market will get more bearish because more calls are being getting sold aggressively even atm calls are getting sold aggressively so mm. this is these are the three major points uh, this is well known i guess there is there is one uh, one question so related yeah. to this pcr only so uh, so there is an data which shows that sometime these pcr is also infected by I the lost hedger you. right i can't so hear most you of the people who have actually a position in bullish side they also use these you know put put side I to repeat the question the because i by because i am on my mobile i got a call and i totally missed that part could you just repeat the question yeah sorry so what i'm saying that this pcr value apart from the market participation of buyer seller there is also one con- one uh, kind of trader who was a uh, hedger right Right. So they use put call for their hedging position, right? Correct. It might be possible that I am a bullish, but I am hedging the position as a bearish mode. Absolutely. Correct. So for those kind of people, how we will recognize? Because it is there a major impact for the because of hedger in this PCR or it no? Will be the, no, the, no. The point is PCR in itself is not a signal. Mm. If you are going to use PCR, you have to use the combined open interest of futures. You have to see what your charts, your systems are telling. you have to also see the individual option strikes whether there is put time winding or there is long build up or something pcr is just one part of the jigsaw puzzle pcr in itself is not a signal hmm. <coughs> okay. and also dada i think sorry and also dada yeah. i think we have to look at the individual pcrs as well at the individual yeah yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely that's something which i uh, sometimes follow <coughs> because because if you are looking at a very uh, far otm pcr that's probably some chindi chot selling two rupee options he doesn't have an impact on the market he doesn't have a view on the market also he's just he's trading strangles both sides and trying to get in the money but if you are looking at the pcr of at the atm strike if somebody is selling the meat for example if you are an option seller we have a line that uh, sell the meat not the wings so if somebody will be aggressively acting on the atm that person will probably have a 80% weightage in fact when i do options chain analysis but i uh, say is Uh, have eighty percent weightage on what's happening on the ATM strike and twenty percent weightage at what's happening on the OTM strikes. So obviously, individual uh, strike PCR is important, and the most important eighty percent weightage, as I said, is obviously the ATM strike. Right. Right. right here, uh, uh, some people say like um, add all the call OI means all the strikes OI and all the put OI and calculate the PCR. But some people say like uh, you take at the money plus five or four strike price, which is most active. and calculate the pcr so which is the right method uh, as per you both are right uh, uh, the person who is doing uh, atm plus 5 is actually using the same formula which is uh, used to calculate the wicks right so mm, at correct. atm plus 5 whoever is uh, uh, acting on the market he has a much more 
i would say conviction on what is doing and if a person is doing say 10 strikes otm 5 delta calls or puts he is not very convinced he is just trying a statistical method ki outside 2 sd range maybe the market will not go so that person does not have an absolute view on the market as of now but if i am working on the atm i am obviously selling the meat so i will have a bigger impact of theta if the market goes on my side but again the atm will have a bigger impact of vega if the market goes against me so that person who is working on the atm has a much bigger conviction on the market than the person who is doing the otm so if you are doing the full uh, total call puts etc maybe it will give you a broad idea but not that very specific idea what is going to happen immediately but the more you come towards the atm the more pinpointed i would say laser focus you will get on where the market is at correct correct okay fine so okay let's move to the uh, next kind of discussion so uh, so let's say uh, uh, now i know the option chain i got the option chain i understand the pci right so right. is there any method for me as a trader apart from moving to the let's say today i am going to trade in uh, nifty or bank nifty mm-hmm. what should be my first approach to start the option trading looking option chain and pci data is there any support resistance i can identify using that or is there any data point which i should start you know uh, looking into that okay let's discuss positional trading because day trading will be a different ball game altogether the data will yeah. be very fast but the same uh, methods which i am sharing on positional trading mm-hmm. they will be a bit fast but day trading also will work so yeah. the first thing notice is see the whole chain see at which strike the highest number of calls uh, or oi is there on the call side also see on the puts where the highest oi is there okay those particular points are basically the major resistance and supports of the market for example we are at 17100 in fact this discussion will be much more clearer when we go to the absolute last point what we are expecting for the budget let us say 18000 is the highest amount of calls uh, call open interest which means the sellers have maximum they are selling at 18000 correct so they expect the market not to go above 18000 within this month so that's your resistance now let us say 16000 puts i'm just giving a hypothetical example has the highest oi in terms of puts that means market will not go below 16000 so this is the most basic idea of studying support and resistance number one number two if you are looking at nifty and bank nifty then you have this week you have next week and you have the monthly which are very active so if you see this week a particular strike has high oi next week also that particular strike on call side also has the highest oi monthly also has the highest oi then all the sellers are absolutely convinced that the market is not going above that level so when you are looking at the indices rather than looking at just the weekly always have a look at the weekly and monthly both next week is a bit illiquid but if you are doing index uh, option chain analysis trying to understand support resistance then always look at week and month and as you go uh, ahead of tuesday from tuesday onwards you need to look at this week next week and the monthly strike so if you see this three strikes and where the oi's are placed you will get a very good uh, i would say road map in front of you what the sellers are expecting the markets to be within the next two days within the next eight days and maybe within the next this particular month so that gives you a road map on how to plan your trades this mm-hmm. is the way you recognize the support or resistance got it Okay, it's amazing. It's amazing. So uh, we learned about how to recognize the support and resistances. And uh, can you just tell us what does the price and OI say about a particular strike? So if we are looking at trading on a particular strike, so what would be the price and OI speak about it? So for example, okay. Nifty. If I'm looking at uh, Uh, let's say the current contracts uh, let's say 17000 let's take a case study uh, okay so 17300 uh call, mm-hmm. so it's being at 269 45000 is oh my for the call okay where if you can put so there 22000 is the put So, what does the price and OI talk about? Like price was up, and today OI also is up by twenty nine thousand. Mm-hmm. Which one are you talking about? Seventeen three hundred. Are you giving no, a hypothetical or a real example? 
it's a live i'm just looking at it and just stop is just looking at it weekly right or now. monthly weekly or monthly weekly weekly so 17300 weekly right now is trading weekly call or put call okay. it's trading 160 it's, yeah it's trading at uh, 20 uh, let's say 20 uh, 23 uh, sorry it's 20 at 160 it's, it's i'm looking at third fair bull trade actually yeah yeah i'm also looking at third fair so that's trading at uh, 269 rupees that's trading at 160 rupees if you're looking at the weekly 7300 call okay it was actually in the nsc ठीक है इफ यू कैन जस्ट एक्सप्लेन लाइक व्हाट वुड बी द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द टू माने प्राइस अप एंड ओपन इंटरेस्ट अप एट अ सर्टेन स्ट्राइक प्राइस फॉर द कॉल हाउ शुड वी ट्रीट दैट ओके व्हेन यू आर डूइंग एन ओपन इंटरेस्ट एनालिसिस ऑफ एन ऑप्शन स्ट्राइक इट्स डायमेट्रिकली डिफरेंट फ्रॉम व्हाट वी सी ऑन फ्यूचर्स बिकॉज़ द मोस्ट बेसिक ओआई एंड प्राइस रूल इन फ्यूचर्स इज इफ प्राइस इज अप एंड ओआई इज अप एंड दैट्स बेसिकली लॉन्ग बिल्ड अप if uh, price is down and why is up that's basically short build up but options is ulta remember the option yes. chain we are looking at from the seller's perspective so if on that particular strike why has gone up that means basically sellers have sold more right so that's bearish if the oi has price has gone up and oi has gone down that means the seller has is covering his position so that's bullish so that's how i will look at a strike Yes, yes. This is something which we all generally, you know, new traders in the market, we get confused with this. Thanks for clarifying yeah, this. Yeah, because option option analysis in mm-hmm. futures and options are totally different. A uh, futures mm-hmm. is basically not from a seller's perspective. Futures has an equal uh, risk reward matrix for both the buyer and the seller. But the options market is basically tilted in favor of the seller due to the theta decay, obviously. So we will analyze the options market from a seller's perspective, where we do not consider the buyer and seller to be the same. That's why the OI analysis becomes different from in futures and in options. Right. Right. Uh, Nandita, uh, when yeah. we are talking, we have started with the option chain and uh, like open interest and PCR. When we discuss mm-hmm. about the options. the mm-hmm. iv uh, implied volatility is also one of the important uh, points uh, most of the people are discuss about that uh, can mm-hmm. you please explain what is uh, iv and what is the importance of uh, iv and how can we use this for our trading okay i will start with an example let us say options are potatoes alu you go to the market to buy potatoes correct so the demand of potatoes is high actually this example of potatoes just diverging because uh, Uh, I'm an economics honors grad, so in economics we did a lot of examples with potato prices, right? <laughs> so basically, yeah. Uh, anyway, so you go. This has been a habit which has stuck with me. So let's say you go to the market to buy potatoes. Now uh, suddenly you hear that uh, potatoes have been stockpiled by different vendors. This year the potato crop will probably be lower. So let's buy some more potatoes because the price should slump like hell when it starts to go up. So you start buying more potatoes. Now this gives rise to an excess demand in the market. And basic demand price relationship is demand rises, price rises of the potato. Now think in terms of an option. IV is nothing. Forget IV means volatility. Forget IV means not in black and shows. It is derived from the option price. Yes, I will tell you. If demand is more, IV is high. If supply is more, IV is less. so higher iv means higher demand lower iv means higher supply demand and supply when we talk about is basically demand and supply of that option simply substitute that potato with an option so agar bazar mein ek option hai and more people are trying to buy it so obviously the price will be higher iv will be higher if more people are trying to sell it then iv will be lower this is point 1 point 2 an option seller the person who is selling the option he is getting compensated for taking a risk because as i told he is putting up a margin he has unlimited risk he has the obligation etc etc so he demands a compensation to sell that option now let us take two examples let's say one is itc and dusra kisko pakadte hain pagal stock kon hai abhi ix and let us hypothetically say both at the same price itc is also 250 ix is also 250 correct 
Now ITC you try to buy a 250 con, it will be like four bucks. IEX you try to buy a 250 con, it will be like twelve bucks. Why? Same monthly expiry, everything is there because the seller knows ITC का नाम तो मीम है, वो तो ज़्यादा कुछ करेगा नहीं, ये तो कुछ करता नहीं है. तो इसका चार रुपए मिलने से I will get compensated on the risk. ITC कितना move करेगा? दिन में दस परसेंट तो move करता नहीं है, move करता है एक रुपया. Now the same bugger if he tries to sell IEX, he will not be satisfied or compensated with four rupees. डिमांड एंड सप्लाई If demand is more, IV is higher. If supply is more, IV is lower. Number one. Now, how does this help us? This helps us, as I said. Let us again go back to the same example, ITC and IEX. Now, obviously, we know that now we know that ITC has a lower IV because uh, uh, risk seller ka kam hai. IEX has a higher IV because risk seller ka jada hai. So, if I see the data, mujhe har vak dikhega. कि ITC का IV, I'm just giving a hypothetical example. ITC का IV है से 20 और IEX का IV है 45. तो अगर मैं ये दो स्टॉक देखके सोचता हूँ that if I have to buy an option, I will buy the lower IV one. So I buy ITC and uh, IEX is the higher IV one. I will sell uh, IEX option. So I'm long vol over here and short vol on the other stock. दस दिन बाद होगा कि ITC तो move नहीं करेगा. उसका vol का मेरा पैसा जाएगा. और IEX उसमें 20 percent move करके उसमें मेरा पैसा लग गया. So, yes, strategy when you are seeing different stocks, each stock when they have a different IV is inherent to that stock's nature. So, there what we do is we use something called the IVR or IVP, implied volatility rank or implied volatility percentage. I deal with IVR, so I will speak on IVR. Implied volatility rank is we take the high and low IV of that particular stock. कितना पहुंचा था in the last one year. So, let us say ITC reached something like thirty. Okay, so ITC reached something like 22 highest IV and 10 lowest IV. Correct? Abhi ITC ka IV hai 20. So from a scale of 22 to 10, if I am at 20, I am on the higher band. So IVR will be high. Uska matlab ITC ka option is now expensive. And let us say, wo jo apka IEX ka option tha, maine bola tha ki uska IV hoga 40. To uska ek saal ka range dikhte hain. Uska lowest IV hai 35, highest IV is like 80. So wahan pe abhi 40 IV hai. According to IVR, that is actually a low IVR. So IEX is the option I should buy, and ITC is the option I should sell if I'm doing a strategy. So IVR implied volatility ranks actually equalizes your sense of volatility across stocks. So we can make an idea that if I say ITC is hovering within a range of 15 to 30 IV within the last one year, जब ये 30 का आसपास जाता है IV, we should be focusing on option selling strategy. जब 15 का पास IV आ जाता है, since the IVR is low. We should be focusing much more on uh, buying strategies. Why? Because implied volatility has three characteristics. One of the characteristics is mean reverting, and this uh, means if a low IV zone is there, it will be followed by a high IV. If a high IV zone is there, it will be followed by a low IV. So if we use this mean reversion perspective, and and it's very consistent on uh, volatility, more than one stock ka movement of forecast kar pao ki na pao. Volatility का movement from a low to high, high to low, this is absolutely consistent. So if the volatility is low and I'm using buying strategies, obviously a rise in volatility will benefit me. Okay, and if the volatility is high, I'm focusing on the mean reversion part of the volatility and I'm using a selling strategy. If vol comes down, obviously my selling strategies will gain because vol and theta again are closely related. Because if your IV rises, your theta decay actually slows, and if your IV falls, your theta decay actually accelerates. So this is why IV is important when you are doing an option. Obviously, this is a vast subject, and by speaking, it's very difficult to explain. In fact, when we planned about this, I told you not yet. Bol ke samjha na thora mushkil hai. I hope I am clear, but it would be very clear if you do some IV graphs, see the IVR across one year, and test it yourself. I hope I have answered your question. Yeah, right. So uh, you have mentioned here, like low IV you have to buy and high IV you have to sell, right? So, so IVR, high IVR. वो लो या हाई क्या है दैट विल बी डिटरमाइन बाय आईडिया राइट द फिगर इटसेल्फ डज नॉट टेल यू व्हेदर इट्स लो और हाई 
it will be seen in the context of how the stock iv has behaved over the last one year okay okay fine because the, what happened like in march uh, 2020 uh, like uh, wix also shot up to 80 plus right so Correct. we don't know what is low iv or what is high iv so uh, how to how to like uh, predict this how to calculate like uh, see nobody can predict volatility that's the basic point you can make an informed guess that's it and obviously people have different models to predict this kind of things whether this will go or not but that's where the quant part comes in so you need to make a model which will kind of predict with some degree of accuracy again it will be wrong quite a few times but it will give you an expectation whether the iv is going to go up or the iv is going to go down so that has to be a mathematical model and not what you think right right so which strike of an option change generally if we someone is playing direction mm-hmm. so the which strike from the option chain you recommend one should buy and uh, for sellers what kind of strikes they should look at selling okay so perfect question if you are playing naked always try to buy in the money options at least one strike in, in the money market. never buy a yeah never buy a far otm option because far otm options are designed to go to zero it's full theta there is no meat but when you are buying an in the money option there is some meat some intrinsic value and there is some theta so when the option actually moves if you are in an in the money option your theta decays rate is very slow if you are an otm option your theta decay is very fast so if you are looking to play direction try to always buy in the money option and stop buying otm options if you buy an atm option actually your decay is the highest in terms of percentage on an atm option so yes, directional yes. buy in the money if you are trying to sell options and make money try to sell 30 delta options or above if you are selling naked because on the option chain when you see the 30 delta option very simply 30 delta put and 30 delta call they actually cover one standard deviation from the current price where you are within which 68% of the time the market will remain so if you sell an option 30 delta above whether put or call you actually have a 68% chance of making money okay so if you are selling naked go outside 30 delta if you are buying naked go in the money so simple wow this is amazing you solved one of my questions personal questions so so easily and so in a nice way and this is also always has been a misconception of people they feel that out of the money mein paisa banta hai but at the money may bhi aapka sabse highest delta decay hota hai udhar maine sorry i will i will i will say zyada hota hai i will tell you an interesting uh, point which if mm. you see the nse chain you will understand do you have the nse chain in front of you know this is option chain yes you will see on the chain you okay you will see on the option chain if you see the background color in some it is deep yellow and some it is light can you see that yes why is nse using two colors that's in the money and out of the money correct absolutely correct so nsc is actually through the background color telling you which is in the money and which is out of the money you will yes. have a deeper background on the in the money options and a lighter background on the out of the money options now those in the money options have i have a famous example actually think of a packet of uh, lays chips right so when you buy a packet of lays chips do you get i mean people are laughing i guess because i make this a joke anyway uh, so they are laughing and even me because yeah. i still remember i will never forget that potato economics example which you gave no no here lays chips ka story dusra hai ki you buy a lays chips packet of 100 rupees ten correct if okay. you open the packet do you get the whole packet full of chips no we get There the whole packet chips. full of mawa and a little bit of chips correct my daughter calls it my daughter's age group calls it thoda sa chips baki ta bhalo basha bhalo basha is love it call it anyway. so when you buy an option you have some chips and some here that chip is basically your intrinsic value and that here is basically your extrinsic value okay so the packet of chips is 10 bucks you get some chips some here now shubhro let me uh, no shankho right yes yes ha, now shankho let me tell you boss shankho there is another packet of chips this is priced at 2 rupees it's much cheaper but it's full of air when you buy it there's no chips it's full of air but it's cheaper mm. no, 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 no. right that's an otm option 
it's full extrinsic it has no intrinsic value theta decay rate is almost the highest in terms of percentage you will get nothing but retail continuously buys this otm buys pure air hoping ki isme kuch aayega bas kuch aata nahi inna mani jo aap khareed rahe ho you are thinking that the price is high but boss that has need that has intrinsic your theta decay is lower so an options buyer will try to get chips right a option seller will try to sell you air which is otm if you go outside 30 delta you are selling pure air ek to 1 sd ka jahan jaane ka chance hi kam hai 32% of the time jayega 68% nahi jayega so your odd already doubles as a seller when you are selling outside 30 delta statistically and you are selling pure air means you are getting a lot of decay on that particular option theta decay is your favor so for a buyer buy in the money buy chip and some air for a seller always sell pure air this is the most basic interpretation which option you should buy and which option you should sell but again depending upon your strategy there are for example you are doing a bull spread let us say if you buy one strike in the money and if you sell one strike out of the money you are basically buying an option which has meat and you are selling pure air that's the basic idea of a bull spread or a put spread or whatever so any option strategy when you see the options which you buy within the strategy have some intrinsic and the options which you are selling within the strategy to reduce your risk exposure or whatever those are always pure air so this is the underlying philosophy of i would say the matrix of options trade and this is very well known this is not something i have made up anyway now when i am looking into this option chain right now uh-huh. the dark part is looking like the potato color and the white part <laughs> is actually air now this on the new side the previous side was actually yellow and light i don't like yeah. look at this chain as of now i have different software so i don't get the color <laughs> nice thank you thank you yeah. welcome yeah next question please yeah yeah um i think i thought uh, alok is there. okay anyway uh, like um using this option chain or open interest can you predict the price movement like uh, if i buy a option or selling option where uh, this, this 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 honestly it would be very difficult to explain just by talking okay. this almost yeah. impossible so yeah, i, I know. will avoid, avoid this question okay this i yeah. i i i it, it, i will not be able to possible for me to explain this just basically yeah. sure 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 yeah great so then uh, we, we have hmm. yeah yes sir go ahead go ahead peter go ahead peter so um uh, nandeep if we have any uh, positions like um, and um, we want to manage the risk so how you how you manage the risk in option uh, like options can you give you some some of the strategies or the way you manage your risk okay i will give you a general guideline because the question yeah. you are asking would be dependent on a particular strategy which i am having so the general guidelines would be like uh, as i said earlier avoid always avoid buying naked otm options this is number one point i will like to emphasize once again because this is the biggest mistake retail always makes buying naked otm options don't do that you will lose money in the long run you cannot make money in the long run nobody has made money in the long run buying naked otm options clear number 2 these are rules which we have seen working in the indian markets if you buy a naked option in the money whatever do not stay in the position for more than 3 days with a naked option if you stay for more than 3 days theta decay will kill you even if the stock is making a move in your direction so if you buy a naked option maximum 3 days you will hold the position if you buy a spread debit spread whatever then you can hold your position for a maximum of 5 days these are iron rules try not to never break them if you don't break them you are happy number 3 uh the biggest theta decay which you see starts from 13 days to expiry which is two weeks ahead of expiry so if the expiry is on a thursday that week and the week earlier so prior to that your decay is actually slow if you plot the decay curve you will see that from the 13 days the decay curve actually makes a jump the decay is very fast okay because if you go to the black and scholes formula options decay at the square root of time so there the decay curve is extremely fast so your options will lose value extremely fast on the penultimate week before the expiry so there you should be focused on strategies which are selling a bit more do not try naked strategies on the penultimate week before the expiry you will not get money uh, another risk management would be 
as much as possible try to remain in spreads could be a bull spread could be a bear spread could be a butterfly could be a ratio could be a condor because this line i picked up from another big trader staying in spread is staying alive Ex- explaining if you are staying in a spread and you get stuck you can cut one part sell another part cut one part buy another part sell some more take a hedge you can do a lot of things but the moment you are in naked and the market goes against you you have only one choice either you sit with the position and hope or you cut your position and book your loss you have no other solution because once you are in a naked and the position goes against you you cannot repair it whatever you try to repair you are actually either booking the loose loss or you are stopping your future profits but if you are in some kind of a spread some kind of a ratio some kind of when is a spread i am talking about all the strategies you have much more options in your hand to modify your strategies alter them to just suit to just reduce the risk to stop the loss altogether to increase your chance of profits you can do a lot of things so as much as possible try to remain in spreads now when i say this i have seen something when i appear on cnbc awards some days i give naked calls some day i give spreads okay if i get a naked call i will get 30 i will get 200 likes 30 comments if i give a spread i will get 30 likes and two comments so, okay so we i have funniest part is 95% of the time i am actually doing spreads 5% of the time i am actually doing naked but retail is actually focused on doing naked all the time and getting bitten all the time so another risk management logic could be from the moment you start kindly start in a spread that will give you much more breathing space and as i said remember this line if you have a trading one kind of me where you write down interesting things staying in a spread is staying alive keep this in your mind hmm makes sense <laughs> so uh, sir uh, to be very frank we also we also get the similar kind of experience yeah yeah okay so this is not new for uh, so most of the users and then that's the that's the one of the reason to start this fn of charge and talk about the experience of a trader so that we can explain that what is the real gap okay Right. So, which as a which probably as a customer you are looking is a cheaper option. It's not a cheaper. It's probably mm-hmm. the most costliest. But the problem yes, is you are yes, looking yes. only price. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. So uh, now the last last question for this uh, for this session today. So uh, okay now uh, and it is very specific to budget since we have a budget right. Correct. So uh, specific to budget. So as an option trader. Mm-hmm. So what should be my you know, uh, so right now my first question is. i'm looking for oie and option chain data what is Correct. what what is i'm observing as a trader what should be my step for the budget perfect now obviously this is one question which i have prepared right after the market close today so if you guys are <laughs> listening to this uh, on your laptop hmm. if you can open the nse option chain or any other option software you have and open the nifty 3rd february option chain you will probably follow what i'm saying hmm. now nifty as of today the implied spot price is like 17104 17100 okay if it is at 17100 okay yeah i will teach you a simple logic to understand what the uh, sellers or what the market is expecting till 3rd february now i am not even going on a monthly chain because budget is on first so a major Correct. action will be focused on this weekly chain yes now the 17 uh, 17100 put is 244 rupees i guess everybody can see a uh, 7100 call is 244 rupees 17100 put is 224 rupees right if you add both your total comes to 468 let's take a round figure of 470 rupees is the price of your atm straddle now this yes. straddle is also known as a market maker range if you add this straddle to the straddle price to your current price 17100 plus 470 and 17100 minus 470 you will get a level of 16630 and 17570 so the players in the market majorly are expecting these two ranges 16630 and 17570 that till budget day after budget till expiry on uh, thursday the market is not going to cross these levels now i will show you something very interesting if you again now look at the chain hmm. try to look which put has the highest oi you will see the put which is the highest oi is 16700 now see the price of the put it is 89 rupees now think in the terms of a point of a seller a seller is selling that put say 90 rupees of 16700 where is loss his loss is 16700 minus 90 which is like uh, 16610 yes 
So below sixteen six one zero, this particular option seller will be losing money, which is one SD away, right? Correct. So your uh, ATM straddle range gave you a lower boundary of sixteen six thirty. Hmm. Your highest put concentration is at sixteen seven hundred. I am deducting the OI pr- uh, option price from Ready it. It is yes. giving me sixteen six one zero. It is very similar, right? Correct. Correct. Now look at the call side. Now the, this is interesting in a way because you will see the major. Volume always, other weeks, other months, is concentrated on the 500 and 1000 strike. 16500, 17000, 17500. These are the prefer sellers' preference. Mm. But this week it is concentrated on 16700. Understand this. Number one. Mm. Number two. Now look at the highest call open interest. That is as 17500. See the call price. It is 98 rupees. 17500 plus 98. It comes to 17598. What was your initial uh, straddle range? Seventeen five seventy. So now we understand the whole options market. The sellers are expecting a major support at sixteen six one zero to sixteen six thirty. They do not expect the Nifty to break this range post budget till third thirty. On the upside, they are expecting seventeen five seventy to seventeen five ninety eight. That is the range they are expecting. Now. If the market stays within this range, whatever options you are going to buy, you are going to lose money hmm. because IV will get crushed and your Correct. money will go. But yes. if this range breaks out, hmm. that be a hell of a move. So seventeen six hundred, sixteen six hundred. Kisi taraf agar budget ka baad tuta, to ek tarfa ka movement apko dikhega and that would be a massive move. So hmm. this is your broad idea on which you should play. Now let us say you are an option seller. Correct. Hmm. आपको लगता है बजट में घटा होगा कुछ नहीं होगा हर बार जो होता है वही होगा मार्केट कहीं नहीं जाएगा एंड ऑप्शन प्राइसेस विल कोलैप्स आई एम गोइंग टू सेल स्ट्रैडल्स आई विल सेल द बीट सुबोधी प्रेस टोल स्ट्रैडल इज द बीट आई विल सेल दैट गो हेड एंड सेल इट नो इश्यूज बट योर गार्ड शुड बी इन दिस टू पोजीशंस दैट इफ द मार्केट ब्रीचेस दिस लेवल्स आई शुड बी गार्डेड सो इफ आई अ सेल अ स्ट्रैडल ऑफ से 17100 आई विल बाय अ कॉल ऑफ 17600 एंड आई विल बाय अ पुट ऑफ 16600 To guard in case the market goes out of this state, I do not suffer an uh, crippling loss. So this is what the structure is telling you right now. Now remember, this structure will change. This will change to a different figure probably by Monday evening, and it will again change as the budget session starts. So yes. whenever and and this analysis what we are doing is basically dynamic because we are analyzing this from data from where the OI is placed, what is the price of the option and stuff. Mm. So. When the data changes, as time goes by, data will change. So Monday morning, this data will be something. Afternoon, it will be something. So if you are trying to plan the budget, you need to watch this data continuously till the budget, Madam Finance Minister, starts speaking. You will get a good idea what the market is expecting. It is not that the market will behave as per expectation, but what the market is expecting gives you idea how you should be placed on your strategies on Nifty or whatever. You can do this on Bank Nifty. You can do this on a stock, whatever. This is basically the broad idea. Hmm. So basically, sir, two hundred rupees per spread. So I am showing you the same thing. Yup. Okay. Ah. So makes sense. Okay. Okay. Got it. So. Okay. So, so uh, great. I think I will add one more question. Sure. So this is just uh, for many people who are looking at like IVs will crash, but mm-hmm. IVs will crash. What time do you expect IVs to crash? Do you expect to crash when our honourable finance minister starts speaking, or when she has completed her uh, speech? This is interesting. Basically, uh, within the speech, now this is not data. What I have noticed is within the speech on any uh, budget, the government sets an agenda. Correct. The basic broad agenda is whether this will be a populist budget or this will be a corporate. Budget. at the moment the players will get a sense that what is the tone of the budget that will change ideas if they get the tone that this is going to be a populist budget against corporate ideas will start going up because that's when the risk of downside comes into play but if they understand that uh, the budget is going to be corporate friendly market is going to be safe market is going to go up then ideas will start crashing because again iv if i take one step further vix is basically a fear index So when the traders will fear that the market might fall, fear is obviously a fall. Nobody fears a rise. Come on, okay. So if the people believe that the market will fall, then the IVs will start rising. So before budget, I did not 
मेक अ व्यू दैट आई विज विल ऑब्वियसली क्रैश दैट वुड बी इडियोसी बिकॉज अगर आई क्रैश उतना आसान होता तो हर बार ऑप्शन बेच के सबको पैसा नहीं मिलता वो तो होता नहीं है ना आएगा तो आई वी क्रैश करेगा ही but iv may or may not crash like you rightfully explain to us so if okay, i will just add one more point if you think that you can hear the finance minister speaking then make a sense what she is saying and then you can act accordingly on the markets you are probably a few light years below light years uh, away from what the hedge funds of the hft firms are doing they have uh, machine language programs which uh, actually read that budget speech as it's going on they can immediately analyze the sentiment and yeah they can immediately analyze the sentiment and uh, they can immediately actually act on the market so before you uh, hear that thing can then trade uh, algos will actually be already operating in the market so rather than listening to the budget speech if you watch the ivs and the price action that will give you a sense whether the budget is right that's what what i want to add you cannot beat the algos of that and i think it's more than the finance minister's speech we should focus on the ivs and how the price actions are happening correct 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 right dada for clarity because, because i remember this i remember this a few years back probably in 2019 budget not 20 2019 budget i was trading live with a group of students now when the finance minister started speaking uh, the whole chain started changing and it actually predicted where the market is going to go even before she was 5 minutes into the speech so by the time she started speaking pehla 10 minute mein some algos might have taken a view and a very clean view that where this budget is headed and they traded according to that of the markets so that data will obviously give you much bigger space than uh, a bigger idea what is going on than listening to finance minister speech i am not asking that you don't listen to it do listen to it but focus on the data first and regarding data i have a famous i have a very favorite quote not mine somebody else said it that uh, without data you are just a person with that with an opinion right and opinions are like assholes everybody has one so unless you have actually data to back your opinion don't trade that data will come from the option chain from the ivs how the ys are changing and stuff so focus on the data you should be safe okay so uh, so before we just uh, uh, just this is, this is uh, thank you uh, subhadeep dal but uh, this is something which i want to share with all our audience here please remember whatever we are sharing in this group today it's completely completely based on knowledge for knowledge purpose only and the levels and the strategies which have been given are only indicative and not recommendations so alok to yeah. you just just oh, one second Yeah, hello. There are a lot yes, of people are asking for. Uh, they they want to ask some questions, so they are sending some uh, like uh, 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 request to us. So I think uh, anyone wants to like uh, have some questions, they can send a question to me or Alok, so we yeah, can I ask. Got, so I got I got one question. So Shripad is asking if I am a normal day strangle seller, what hmm. strike price of call and put I should sell, and what delta the, and theta? On. I am not an option seller. Can't answer the question. I don't sell uh, options in trade. I am primarily a buyer. I am hundred percent times a buyer on trade. So this is not my domain edge. Okay. So, uh, Sripad, uh, you know, I'll we'll get some, you know, a core option seller to answer you. Okay. Okay. So there is one more question. Okay. Before the question, yeah, let me summarize the two three points. so uh, guys uh, so one important data which today even i come to know that you know in the us market there is no live uh, you know i uh, ois so it's a really interesting so we are probably the pioneer in the uh, whatever the indicators and the uh, strategies we are using in uh, especially for a uh, ois related that's why, that's why you don't have a book on options chain think of yeah. that ha hmm. uh, otherwise ha uh, otherwise someone have at least wrote yeah 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 okay so that is one so uh, guys uh, so three four major point uh, before you know taking to the question so what uh, shubhadeep sir has mentioned that please don't buy naked option and uh, you know 
please mark it these are the few pointers i'm just repeating to all of you don't buy naked option ever do not stay more than 3 days if you are even if you are buying naked options okay try to buy naked option in the money always right though somehow order the money cheaper but as you know as you know shubhadeep sir explained regarding the you know uh, air and the chips so focus on chips rather than air okay so that is uh, another important point uh, the third point uh, fourth point is if you are looking for any buying spread any kind of spread uh, don't stay more than 5 days i mean uh, that's the another idea uh, then the yeah uh, the last point is the dk the theta dk will start before try to 13 days of a monthly expiry right so whatever the strategy you are going to make just make sure the the moment whatever the option you are going to buy your theta dk will start the eventually for before the 13 days right so try to avoid those kind of naked options especially when you are in between 30 days of expiry right so that is four major point for all the options uh, or for all the options said right please mark it uh, we'll try to uh, publish some of the note related to that just to give you the sense that, so that you uh, you, you all should uh, remember right so let me uh, take few questions okay generally the highest over here okay hello one important point i think we should add please, uh, please. when the actual uh, budget is on instead of looking at what the finance our honorable finance minister is saying we should focus on look at the option chain and the change in price and oi so that's also uh, one important another point, point another point if you're looking at the oi Remember the OI comes to you three and a half minutes late. The exchange publishes it every yes. three and a half minutes and as a snap. It's not live like the volume that it's continuously getting updated. So whatever data you are working on, OI is you are always seeing it. What happened three and a half minutes earlier? Just remember this. Right. Yeah. Sir, there is one question from Pratik Dhanwaria. So he was asking. So okay. So he the generally he just want to know that. if there is any particular options there is a highest oi whether it is call or put side if that breach what should be the next step so he is he is given the example of yeah every yeah. every breach it will go in that direction that means the option sellers are trapped and they will run for cover that will accelerate the movement in that direction hmm. okay i think he you got your answer i know <clears throat> in fact i have got a whole tool based on this one you can think i have coded that uh, that scans and find these opportunities so <laughs> this is pretty well done okay how to find out ivr if a stock is in fno for less than 1 year ah good question you can't you can you can walk with a 6 month ivr but yes you have to yeah. work with a 6 month ivr actually ivr one year a lot of people use but uh, when you have a very uh, irritating kind of event like march 2020 so next uh, if you try to use that iv in your ivr you will always get a low ivr you So then, what we do is we kind of get out of it and uh, try to use a different IVR. Number one, number two, I wrote a huge Twitter thread once that what is the problem of an IVR, and I was using box plots using Python. I will try to retweet that particular thread. I did a whole thread on IV IVR, how to uh, close this problem and stuff. So you might read through that uh, tweet thread. I think your questions will be answered. Hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. So okay, it's a, this is a very interesting, especially for you. So please discuss this this question. like how to handle losing trade peacefully <laughs> losing trade peacefully losing trade peacefully i don't know whether you are day trader or a positional trader if you are a day trader before you start day trading in the morning right in front of your desk in fact i have it this is the maximum amount i'm going to lose in a day and this is the maximum amount i'm going to make in a day now this maximum amount i'm going to lose in a day it is not a percentage of your capital it is not what you can sufficiently handle there's a very simple test to determine this amount if you lose this amount you will be sleeping peacefully you won't be be snapping at your wife you won't be having three pigs more at night agar ye loss khane ke baad ye teenon mein se koi cheez nahi hota hai to wo aapka loss limit hai ek bhi cheez hota hai to aap loss limit ke bahar ho so fix that amount in front of your screen if you lose that particular amount during the day shut your terminal take a walk number 1 if you are doing position and trading try to keep your loss risk maximum half percent to 1% of your capital deployed isse zyada koi bhi risk कोई भी एक ट्रेड में मत लीजिए अगर ये आप कर सकते हो यू शुड बी हैंडलिंग योर लॉसेस पीसफुली इनफैक्ट इफ यू सी मी ट्रेडिंग आपको क्या लग जाए गेट ऑल राइट ट्रेड्स आई विल गिव यू अ स्टैटिस्टिक अगर पिछला 6 महीना आई हैव डन माय ट्रेड्स आई हैव बीन करेक्ट 54% ऑफ द टाइम 
I've been wrong 46% of the time, which means out of every 100 trades, 54 were correct, 46 was 50 50 pagal doha. Right? So, this boss is not going to be. But if you have profit trade, you will not be able to do it. It doesn't disturb me because I know that each trade when I'm entering, this is the amount I'm going to lose. And if I lose this amount, I will be sleeping peacefully. I won't be snapping at my wife. I will not be drinking myself uh, out. So I'm comfortable with the loss. So find out what's your comfort level. Wo comfort level aapka pas hai, uska andar aapka loss hai. Tab aap peacefully loss tha hmm, Makes sense. Even question, uh, Ritesh is asking one question, uh, Nandiji. Mm -hmm. So he's saying like he's the intraday trader, he's an option buyer, he trades with 5 minute or 10 minutes uh, chart, and he's mm -hmm. saying, do he have to buy in the money options? Because the in the money options have a lot of fluctuations. No, 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 so no, no. If you're an intraday, if you're an, if you're an intraday options buyer, that in the money option logic does not hold. Kindly buy ATM option always, whether you're buying call or put. In fact, I did a YouTube video that's free, that's on YouTube on my channel, why you should be buying an ATR option. That has more advantages than an in-the-money option. So if you're an intraday trader, always focus on it. Yeah, I think uh, Ritesh got the answer. You can see the YouTube video. I've explained it mathematically why it's the most uh, interesting option if you're buying intraday. Uh, that's logical. Buy ATM always if you're trading intraday. Okay, there is a la last question, so this is from uh, one of uh, Karan Tekwani. So I think his personal position. So if any operator has a huge long position in Nifty 50 stocks, how would have he manage in this falling market? Because it is, if he exited uh, his position, the price of that X stock would fall more. If okay. Is there any ways intra OI premier turnover can help in analysis? Uh, actually, OI, actually, operator and who? does not exist. Hmm. That's my answer. Okay. Operator is one of them. Everyone has heard of it. So, what is he doing? What do I do? Don't think this triple digit complex terminology. You will go into inception. Ke andar ghus operator is doing this. I will do this. This is inception level kind of thought process. Operator is saying that no one is not. Your data is the same. That's the end of the story. Hmm. Got it. <laughs> okay, so that, that's it for the day. Uh, guys, yeah. we'll to answer all the questions, uh, you know, in a different medium. Okay. Achha, is this going to be recorded? I mean, is it recorded and it's going to be put up somewhere? A lot of people were asking that on my timeline also. Yes, sir. We, we, we are trying to do that. Uh, okay, we are okay, trying okay, to okay. get the recording for sure. Fine, 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 no? fine. Thanks a lot, everyone, for joining. Uh, We'll try to answer each and every question. Please don't worry, right? We'll we'll answer each and every question, whoever is asked anywhere in any medium, right? And if uh, we'll also try to catch up with Sudeep sir uh, to answer the direct question if any required. Please, please uh, just, you know, uh, post somewhere in the Twitter if you want to ask. Uh, we'll try to answer each and every questions. Hope this entire session will be uh, useful for you guys. See, uh, our overall agenda, whatever the FNO, ch FNO pe charcha we are doing from so many uh, weeks, the only, the only and only reason is to educate yourself, you know, to give whatever the knowledge sharing possible in this entire India to whatever the traders possible. We are trying to keep top most traders from across the industries just to give the answers so that whatever the thought process you have while you are trading in options, whether it is making loss or making profit, doesn't matter. Before that, just understand the market. Before that, just understand these jargons, these terminology while trading, right? So before starting any trade, just to understand the overall ecosystem, just to understand overall the data set, and then probably intend to that. Again, request, please read whatever whatever the data method possible. Please educate yourself from wherever the medium possible, right? And then start reading. Okay, and, uh, guys, thanks a lot. And, uh, Alok, uh, let me also add this. For the budget special, uh, we from Paytm, we are doing a lot of activities in Twitter spaces, Paytm Wealth Academy, Paytl Wealth Community. So please attend them. Most of them are free. Or there's not going to charge you anything. But you will have specifically good speakers coming up and giving us guidance on both investing and trading ideas. Like this is one. So please do attend them and keep on upgrading yourself. Because that is something which is going to take you ahead 
of life like today we have we spoke with shubhadeep with dada when we spoke we got this 20 years of trading experience in just one hour absolutely it's amazing so keep on adding this there's so many people different different fund managers who are going to come up and speak about fundamental analysis and sectors what changes are happening tax consultants are going to come up and demystify in our community and all these are going to come to you for free no charges please keep attending and keep on upgrading yourself thank you shubhadeep da thank you alok peter and all you thank you for thank you for people. having me on this fn of a charcha it was a wonderful experience could share with a lot of people thank you our pleasure our pleasure thank, thank you me. all you lovely people who have come here for this session and wish you all the very best and happy trading thank, thank you, you.